Whatever. Okay, CBS is Japan analyzing is Japan's gun laws. Let's take a look. Over the assassination of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. A gunman shot Abe as he was giving a campaign speech. He later died at the hospital. The suspect was quickly arrested. Ian Overton joins us now. He's an executive director of Action on Armed Violence. Ian, welcome. Thank you for being with us. So this assassination uh, of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is so just surprising and, you know, not necessarily unprecedented. We know a prime minister of Japan has been shot before back in the 30s, but it is certainly shocking because gun violence in Japan is exceedingly rare. <laughs> Absolutely. In 2018, there was just one person shot and killed in Japan in a homicide involving a firearm. So it's it's more than rare. It's it's almost unheard of. And there are actually Japanese people who have never actually seen a gun up close in their lives. Um, this was even reported to the U.S. Senate in an international review of guns. Um, and Bro, the, look at this the concept of a of, of a major political figure being attacked uh, alone would be shocking uh, because violence itself is rare in Japan. But uh, using a gun would be uh, just beyond the imaginings of, of many Japanese. And I think that this will be uh, something debated at length for, for many months, if not years to come. You told the BBC back in 2017 that um, Japan was, quote, the first nation to impose gun laws in the whole world. So has Japan is, historically succeeded in- Is he talking about the katana ban? No shot, right? Implementing stringent gun control legislation. And what effect has that, that had on residents' perception of firearms? Yes, so um, in the uh, 16th century, uh, uh, Toyotomi um, in in introduced what it was called the sword hunt, and that led to a lot of. Um, this is so funny. Can you fix your title? He was the former prime minister. Hassan is spreading misinformation. It's like he was a prime minister of Japan. Stupid, dude. People going through the country. Shinzo Abe despised motherfuckers like you. I'm just gonna let you know. If you're the type of dude who says, like, well, actually. I'm just gonna let you know. He hated you because he hated you and your otaku hikikomori. He wanted you to... He wanted you to get laid. He wanted you to put down the anime. Stop jerking off the hentai and like women of the flesh. Country collecting what was seen as illicit swords and illicit firearms. This was relatively soon after firearms began to be obtainable in Japan. Now, hitherto, um, there had been nations, uh, sorry, city-states that had imposed some form of gun control in Europe, but nothing on a nationwide level as we saw in Japan. And in successive centuries, we saw more and more layers of forms of of gun control taking effect, um, and uh, right up till this, the the the, the post-war years of 1945-1946, you saw some very stringent gun laws coming into place. And today, if you apply for a gun certificate uh, in Japan, you have to submit 13 separate forms of um, identification and verification in order to obtain at most a hunting license. Wow. Um, but we've seen gun ownership in Japan fall mag hugely over the last few years. It's so interesting to hear that, you know, the difference between the gun laws in one country versus for instance, our and how that impacts yeah. safety and uh, absolutely, deaths and absolutely. firearm deaths and such. And Ian, of course, I mean, we can assume that Abe's assassination, as shocking as it is, will somehow change Japan. We don't yet know how, but knowing Japanese culture uh, the way you do, what do you think the official response to his death will be? Do you believe that they will enforce even stricter gun laws? And what might those look like? What? Well, what we do know is what kind of gun law can they enforce? They already have the law. How would they have a stricter gun law, man? Americans are so dumb.
wasn't even a f gun. It was like a made up. It was like a homemade PVC duct tape weapon. You know what I mean? It's so funny that even like the liberal side of the media has only way one way of analyzing situations. It's like, oh, so what? Uh, what do we do? More gun laws? It's like, what are you talking about? It appears to be uh, been a homemade gun. So I think that there's going to be a lot of debate around um, how did he get the component parts for it and where did the information come from. I think there'll be more focus, though, on where did the bullets come from. If the bullets have been home manufactured, there'll be a debate around that. If they had been bought, we may even see more stringent laws coming into place in terms of the ownership of bullets. Um, so um, experts um, I've spoken to in the police on, on in the UK, where we do have quite strong gun laws as well, say that it's not always the gun that's the problem. It's the criminals getting hold of the bullets that poses the greatest threat to um, uh, gangs wanting to use gun violence. So um, I think that there will be a debate around this, but I think there'll also be a wider debate about politician safety. You heard in your previous segment from your previous interviewee that the fact there wasn't a high level of security around Abe. And I I think we'll probably see um more secure the ironic thing is like japan should just do what america does in this circumstance and just move on because like they already have the adequate controls in place and this is one of those instances where it's like what are you going to do about it it's just like yeah just get better i guess like have better uh security measures but that's it You know what I mean? There's literally, they've already done everything. Security for um, serving and previous uh, politicians who may be at risk. But I also think you'll probably see a deeper analysis of what caused this. Was it a form of um, nationalist terrorism? What was the essential grievance? We don't really know at the moment why uh, the attack was done explicitly. And so I think a lot of this will be unpicked in days to come. And you may well see a response, a judicial response from Japan to try and stop future attacks because Japan very much does use the law uh, in a way that I would say potentially America does not. They, they are very quick towards legislation when it comes to preventing violence, whereas in America it becomes a national debate about um, the potential violation of an, of an amendment of the Constitution. So um, I think that in Japan we will see uh, a pushback, but as it is, um, I think we'll probably need to see a review of what happened uh, in detail before that pushback occurs. And Ian, just quickly now, is there fear of copycats perhaps um, moving this well, into a new direction? There was a great deal of discussion a few years ago when 3D printed guns first came out in the US and people feared that these would use, be used by assassins because they wouldn't have serial numbers, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. We haven't really seen that. And I think one of the issues is about munitions and the safety of homemade guns being used. Lots of homemade guns don't go off. And we've had people in the United States killed by 3D printed guns um, where they try to use them. Um, so I yeah. don't know what the copycats will be an immediate concept. All right. Yeah. Ian Overton will leave it there thank you so much thank wild you wild to consider uh, uh, i'm just not going to care about it you know what i mean shinzo abe made the world better david from okay this is gonna make me actually celebrate though if i read a david from article i'm gonna f lose my f and literally say things that will get me banned before i go to f uk so that's not good all right let's continue japanese prime minister shinzo abe has died after being shot while giving a speech at a campaign event. Now, eyewitnesses say that Mr. Abe was shot twice from behind while giving a speech. With a blunderbuss, dude. Blunderbussy. Like, homemade. Crazy. Crazy shit. Yo, Japanese people. Holy shit. Japanese incels are, are, are on a different playing field, brother. They just, like... Anyway, let's continue. In the streets, the country's current prime minister has condemned the shooting, calling it an act of brutality. And world leaders have also come out in the last uh, couple of hours expressing their shock as well. Now, a man was detained after the shooting. It happened in the city of Nara in Western uh, Japan, where Shinzo Abe was giving his support to a candidate uh, there. Uh, let's uh, get more on this now and go straight to our correspondent, Marika Oi, who's uh, in Singapore. 
Um, Rico, incredibly shocking, not just because violence is so rare in Japan, it has been for such a long time, it's very difficult to get hold of a gun, but also Shinzo Abe, we must remind all of our viewers, wherever they are in the world, that he remains a very powerful man in Japan. He was a hugely influential figure, wasn't he? Indeed, he comes from a political family and he has been, uh, he was uh, Japan's longest serving prime minister, uh, only uh, stepped down in 2020. Uh, but as you said, he still has huge influence over the current administration. So, for example, when Russia invaded Ukraine, Mr. Abe came out and said that Japan needed to increase military spending. And then shortly after, you start hearing from the current prime minister, Fumio Kishida, echoing the sentiment. So you can see how still very influential he is. Uh, and it came as a huge shock when we first heard the news that he was shot at around 11.30 a.m. local time this morning in Japan, as you said, in the city of Nara. Of course, Japan has an upper house election coming up this Sunday, and that's why he was out on the streets, uh, you know, giving a speech, uh, supporting one of the candidates in the city. Uh, apparently, that visit was only confirmed late last night. So how the su suspect managed to find out about it and prepared his attack, that remains to be seen. But as you say, a, a, a suspect, a 41-year-old man who lives in the city of Nara has been in police custody. He's been quoted by a, a couple of local media reports saying that he had disagreements with Mr. Abe's policies and decided to attack him. But this kind of violence is extremely rare. So as you can imagine, it comes as a huge shock to everyone in Japan. And it has just been confirmed by an official, by the ruling uh, Liberal Democratic Party that he has passed away yeah bro the funniest thing is just like every alt-right and like conservative dude is just losing their like otakus that are like far right are like oh shinzo abe he was so good he led japan out of <laughs> he led japan out of this dangerous recession he <laughs> he was expressly and fiercely anti-communist we love him it's like bro you're living in idaho what are you talking about? Your only experience with Japan is through f lolly, okay? And now you've decided to be not only a f weeb, okay, which is a crime in and of itself, but now you're living in Idaho, you potato, f and you've decided to be a weeb for like racism too. Oh, Abe Senpai, I can't believe. It's like, dude, what? Dude, you live in Idaho. Stop doing that. Stop. Okay? What the f***, dude? And he didn't even like weebs. So there's that part, too. And uh, it's also shocking because political violence is incredibly rare in Japan as well. Um, but I've just noticed that- like, No, I'm a weep too, which is why I'm saying, you know, smoking on that Shinzo pack because Shinzo did not like the Hikikomoris, okay? He, he wanted, he wanted, he wanted the Japanese to bust raw. In the words of Felix Biederman, he wanted the Japanese to bust raw. He was like, there's a big crisis happening with our population. God forbid we open our borders to immigration. That's not happening. But we will definitely try to get you guys to bust raw that world leaders around the world very quick uh, to, to come out and express their shock as well. He's, he wasn't just a popular leader in Japan, he was a popular leader on the international stage. Yes, I mean, you know, a couple of decades ago, Japan was known for a revolving door of prime ministers. Then Shinzo Abe for the second... Oh, uh, yeah. I'll just, I'll just explain one thing, though. Like, other than, obviously, our incredible relationship with Japan, that was carefully manufactured and designed over the course of the Cold War as an anti-capitalist force against China and Russia, the USSR at the time. Japan really did get away with like a lot of war crimes that people just don't talk about. Like everybody always talks about the Nazis, and for some weird reason, outside of Korea and China and the Philippines, but not as much anymore because Philippines is also an island forward operating base for America. Like people truly truly don't talk about the horrific war crimes that shinzo abe's grand uh, uh grandfather engaged in personally uh 
that uh, were, were, of course, pardoned by the American government and also uh, whitewashed by the American government. So there's a lot of that that is, uh, you know, that, that, but that's also part of the reason why he can do stuff like this. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, the reason why he can do like this, a Japanese prime minister in a plane uh, with 734, uh, 731 on it is equal to German chancellor driving around a tank with 1488 all over it, by the way. Like, the reason why he can get away with like this is because, like, people just don't. <laughs> R.I.P. and peace, Shinzo Abe. You may have chosen some weird hills to die on throughout your life, but at least you're dead. <laughs> Did I say anti-capitalist instead of anti-communist? Sorry, I meant anti-communist. Expressly anti-communist. Um, and we'll look at, like, what the Japanese socialists uh, and, and what they uh, have an opinion on. But, basically, we'll get to 731, okay? We'll get to 731 and its symbolism in a second, okay? That's not an accident. Like, him being on a, on a plane... That, that has 731 on the side of it is not an accident. But we're going to get to that. Let's just talk about his assassination first. <laughs> Don't Google Unit 731. Worst mistake of my life. Don't Google Shinzo Abe grandfather. Worst mistake of my life. If you're a fan of, if you're a fan of Shinzo, if you're a fan of you know, Abe Senpai, you're not going to like uh, what you see in those Google results. Second time that he became a prime minister, he served for many years, and as a result, he became kind of the face of uh, Japanese politics. Uh, became very uh, close friends with, for example, Vladimir Putin. He had very close ties with him, and since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Abe, Mr. Abe has come under a, a bit of criticism about that. He's also known uh, for his very nationalistic views, so he had very frosty relationships with Japan's neighbors like China and South Korea when he was the prime minister. Uh, so he was a divisive figure uh, while his uh, economic policy has been cheered by a lot of investors uh, his uh, foreign policy has been quite controversial and as a result some of the relationships that japan has with its neighbors uh, were somewhat strained as well yeah our colleagues at uh, bbc monitoring uh, that they've noticed that in china leaders there have expressed their shock and they're paying tribute to, to shinzo abe but uh, online they're noticing that a lot of chinese nationalists are celebrating his yeah. death, uh, showing just how divisive he was uh, there, and that he didn't have friends uh, uh, everywhere. How do you think he would like to be remembered? You've been reporting on his career for some time now. The funniest thing is, like, Americans being like, but he was a liberal. He was a liberal. And it's like, hey, why do you think people say, cut a liberal and a fascist bleeds, brother? Like, y yeah, liberals are like that, okay? Like, sometimes. <laughs> All the time. Anyway. Well, he was a politician who pushed for that constitution. Of course, Japan has that pacifist con constitution since the end of the Second World War. He wanted that to be changed, and he's been pushing for that uh, since he was in office and even after he stepped down, he has been quite vocal about Japan's military spending, how Japan needs to cooperate more and, you know, work with its allies when it comes to, for example, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And of course, uh, the current government of Fumio Kishida has been quite proactive in working together with the United States and some of its other Western allies to put pressure on Russia, which didn't happen uh, in 2014. So as I said, you know, he, he was a very influential influential figure and uh, even though he might not have been the most popular politicians in Japan especially uh, among those on the left uh, it, this attack comes as a huge shock and we're now seeing a lot of uh, pictures of him as a as a young child because of course his grandfather was a prime minister uh, his father was a senior politician in the that's kind of weird hmm his grandfather wait what that's interesting um, how does the timing work on that? Like, come on, dude, you're the f the literally think, think. What would the timing of that be like? I mean, Shinzo Abe's kind of old. I wonder how old his grandfather was. What time period was he in power? You think? What? When would that have happened? Like, you're not gonna mention that. 
You're not going to mention that? There is no world in which a German chancellor who is coming from a long lineage of, uh, you know, German politicians would never be mentioned like that. Okay? This is what I'm talking about. Japan was able to just totally evade a lot of this stuff. And I love, I love Japanese people. I love Japanese culture. I'm a it. I'm obsessed with Japan. Yes, uh, all of those things are correct. But come the f on, dude. I mean, Jesus Christ. The Japanese were canonically frozen in ice between 1938 and 1946. Why are you spreading lies? Yeah, they're making it seem like... Yeah, they're making it seem like he was a he was a part of the f minions, dude. You disgust me, you weeb. Says Rajiv Tayyip Erdogan. Okay, I'm not a weeb, but like I, I do, I am a big fan of high speed rail. Okay, but come the f on, dude. I mean, Jesus Christ. Otaku's event China as a special treat. Genshin Impact is giving away 800 Primo and an Abe Corp stall to equip your favorite lolly or handsy man. Okay, stop. <laughs> My man says, so Shinzo was a Nazi? Bro, not every... Is that the only way you can analyze, like, whether someone is good or bad? There's something fundamentally broken about, like, the way that Americans look at history, where it's like, it's only if you're a Nazi. For all intents and purposes, yes. Okay? For you to comprehend, yes. One of his, um... Okay, we'll talk about... We'll, we'll, we'll talk, you're standing at high-speed rails, allegedly, why you don't get along with train wrecks, so, or so I've heard. Oh. It's not only, it's not only uh, Shinzo Abe's, like, personal background, uh, or is his family lineage or whatever, okay, and the war crimes that his uh, grandfather engaged in, okay? What is significant about this, what is significant about it is that what he did in a, in a position of power and like ultimately like i said i i i i guess maybe because of my love for high speed rail i do and because of how far removed i am from japan that i have the capacity to look at this without um i don't know i have the capacity to look at this in in like a in, in like a less passionate way so that's the reason why i'm saying like one way or the other i'm not like a huge I'm not like, oh my god, thank god he died, but I just don't care. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Like, he's a politician in a position of power. He's a liberal politician. Of course he's going to be dog shit, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, Shinzo Abe, former Japanese prime minister... Uh, was assassinated a powerful figure among Japan's right wing. Abe was an apologist for Imperial Japan's war crimes and supported U.S. imperialist efforts in the Asia Pacific. This is true. Uh, he comes from a long line of like, uh, you know, America adjacent. As far as I understand, like he's is, uh, he comes from a, a, a political family uh, and the Liberal Democratic Party, which was uh, one originally some of some of which were. Um, some of which were fascist and then also like hyper nationalist and expressly and openly very, very anti, uh, very anti communist. Um, the short and sweet of it is basically, uh, the short and sweet of it is basically that, um, you know, the CIA had a lot of involvement in the 60s and 50s in Japan during the Cold War. Uh, and, and, and they, they hyped up. They basically did what they've done everywhere around the world, and they, they wanted to make sure that they had a prominence and a strong position in Japan. A disturbing majority of Japanese don't believe that many of Japan's war crimes occurred, my family among them. The historical revisionism is taught in almost all the schools and is due to part by the imperialist org Nippon Kaigi, um, which Abe is a part of, except also, I mean, that same is in Turkey too, so I get it, you know what I mean? Like, Turkey is the same way. 
the Armenian genocide is not only not recognized, but it's called the lie. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's like, they, they literally call it the supposed Armenian genocide in Turkish schools. Like, that's how I learned it. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how it is in countries like hyper-nationalist countries like this. And also, much like Japan, Turkey is also a, a staunch ally of the United States of America and was a part of NATO and literally America funded and funneled guns to hyper ultranationalist uh, militant groups inside of Turkey to squash any any kind of socialist uprising, any kind of labor militancy in the country. So there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that that happened in Turkey as well. So like I, I hate to always take it back to I, I hate to always take it back to, like, Turkey. And you're like, oh, well, how is this related? But it happens in countries that are aligned with the United States of America and its imperial interests. Like, that's how America... Well, that's what America's modus operandi is. And Abe is very similar to that or comes from that uh, background. So I want you to understand that. And he, he was a member of the fascist group Nippon Kaiji. They claim Imperial Japan's war crimes were exaggerated or fabricated and praised Japanese colonialism for liberating Asia from the West. In 2014... 15 of 18, 15 of the 18 uh, in his cabinet were Nippon Kaiji members. We can, you know, get a little bit uh, deeper into Nippon Kaiji and the religious cult that is like, you know, a part of uh, running Japan. Um, Abe praised his grandfather, Nobusuke Kishi, who played a leadership role for Imperial Japan. At the end of World War II, Kishi was imprisoned as a suspected Class A war criminal, but the U.S. government never charged him. And instead, he became Japan's prime minister. And not only that, but this is America's, like, original interest in making sure that Japan was a staunch ally. And the Japanese fascists, who were, of course, anti-communists, were in positions of prominence and positions of power. Um, part of it was the, the literal war, crim war crimes that they engaged in. They did something similar to Operation Paperclip, if I'm not mistaken, where like the USSR executed uh, a lot of the a lot of the people on the. Um, well, I, actually, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the USSR dealings were uh, with Japanese war criminals at the time, but I do know that America uh, took advantage of some of the biological experiments that were being uh, uh, facilitated, which I'm going to get to in a second, uh, and and literally took over some of that research, and again. Unsurprisingly, just like with Operation Paperclip in the aftermath of World War II, took a lot of these war criminals in positions of prominence and kept them there and defended them and whitewashed their crimes and wanted to make sure that they were, you know, the anti-communist people in positions of power. So, at the end of World War II, Kishi was imprisoned. Um, a World War II hero and a reckoning with Japan's past, VJ Day. The last Japanese soldier to formally surrender after the country's defeat in World War II was Hiro Onoda. Lieutenant Onoda finally handed over his sword on March 9th, 1974. He held out of the Philippine jungle for 29 years. On one second. It's like... Come on, bro. You guys have never heard of this? Wasn't there a King of the Hill episode about something like this? Anyway... The U.S. France literally reinstalled Japanese governors in Indochina after the war. Yeah. Um, or was that an Archer episode? There was. I remember watching an episode, I think, of, of the, this exact thing. Um, in interviews and writings after his return to Japan, Lieutenant Onoda said he had been unable to accept that Japan had capitulated. To many outsiders, Onoda looked like a fanatic, but in Imperial Japan, his actions were perfectly logical. Onoda had sworn never to surrender, to die for the emperor. He believed that the rest of his countrymen and women would do the same. But of course, they hadn't. On August 15th, 1945, um, Japan's supreme divine being, Emperor Hirohito, did something no emperor had done before. He went on the radio. Atom bombs had destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. On the day the second bomb was dropped, Stalin declared war on Japan. Soviet forces were already sweeping across Manchuria. Within weeks, they would be landing on the northern island of Hokkaido. Hirohito accepted that the surrender to the Americans was his best choice.
You can't joke about this in Japan, though. One Piece author got in trouble for it. Yeah, Japan is hyper-nationalistic. What the f I mean, I've touched on this every single time I've covered Japan. Um, every time we cover Japan, whether we're talking about, like, Paolo or whatever the f I always will mention how ultra-nationalist Japan is and how hyper-capitalist Japan is. It's not an accident. That happened specifically because of, you know, American involvement. Like, that's just... And xenophobic, yes. It's also part of the reason why the American alt-right love and fetishize the, the Japanese reactionaries regularly. If Stalin had taken Japan, we would have never had this weep. Well, good thing America took it then, okay? Yeah, there, I said it. The world deserved uh, anime and manga, so... Good. Well, I was in Japan. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about the right-wing revisionist uh, history of Japan in a second. But let's give you a little bit more details. The young officers failed to stop the broadcast, but they got their wish after the surrender of the U.S. Hirohito would know would not be tried as a war criminal after all. Instead, he would stay on the throne, effectively an American puppet. Now. There is a bit of an irony there because Emperor Hirohito and his uh, maintenance of, of his seat was actually one of the conditions of surrender for Japan. And at the time, America was like, yeah, no, f that. We're still going to bomb you because the USSR was going over there. So just remember that whenever people say, oh, well, the fire bombings were happening and they were significantly more violent and yada, yada. And that's why, you know, the nuclear option was the peaceful one or whatever the f that's. The real reason why they use nukes is specifically because they didn't want Japan to be USSR territory. Okay? Because they ended up allowing the emperor to maintain his position of power anyway. To maintain his seat anyway. They literally were like, nah dog, no conditional surrender. Just unconditional surrender. Just kidding. We don't even give a f We're just nuking you. And then they did. And then, and then they still allowed their conditional surrender to happen. Anyway. Chat is on one this week. What's, what's happening, dude? What? Now, think about a whole country full of this fanatic and a full invasion of their home turf in comparison to the established casualties of said invasion. The bombs made more sense for the U.S. Please don't run the peaceful nuclear option narrative here. Like, holy shit, dude. Come on. To be fair, we did the same with plantation owners. No, we didn't. Actually, what we did in Japan is exactly like all the bad shit that we did in Japan, with the exception of the nukes, which is a bad thing. But we didn't do the nukes in, uh, we didn't raise the South. We should have. Okay. But also on top of that, we literally did the exact same thing. We allowed reactionary forces to maintain control of the South in an identical capacity to our hand in allowing the reactionary forces in Japan to be the steady anti-communist uh, uh, people in positions of power against the USSR. The South got off super easy, man. Anyway, we're not going to watch a two-hour and 30-minute uh, video on this, but... No, we are going to watch the Biden executive order in a second. Another big motive behind the news was sending a message to the USR. Yes. Peaceful news is literally drilled into your heads at all levels of American academia, so I don't blame chatters. That's wild, dude. <laughs> only in America do motherfuckers say... Only in America do say... Wait, what? Every guy can be a seven has really changed my life? No shot. Really? This is fire. Okay, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. I don't know, man. I'm starting to think the U.S. isn't the best country. All right, we'll do the Brandon thing. We'll do the Mac attack in a second, okay? 
But uh, going back to going back to Shinzo, okay, going back to Shinzo Abe on the Hassan Abe broadcast, okay. Here's some more details, by the way. Uh, multi-barreled firearms were confiscated at the Tetsuya Yaga, uh, Yamagami house. The dude's ex-military. Uh, here's the here's the gun that he used. It was like a blunder bussy with a, uh, which is wild. He made it with like duct tape and PVC and sh okay. Yeah, Hassan Abe, Abe. Um, he made like a sawed-off shotgun, basically. And he straight up walked up behind him in, in firing range and, and popped him. Which is crazy. What's also crazy from an American's point of view, by the way, is that like they apprehended him without killing him, which is weird. But yeah, there's a video of it. Uh, there's a video of it. He's literally f chilling. Here's Shinzo's last moments on this earth where he's just straight up. Oops. Where he's just right there and then boom. Uh, he just gets shot. And I won't show you the footage, obviously. I mean, you can't really tell, but still. And you can see, like, even before he gets shot, because the first shot I don't think hits him. But like here, I'll show you right here. Like, do you see that cloud? Like the massive cloud of smoke. That's where he is. There's a big ass explosion, basically. And everyone's impressed with the gun. I want to know where he got the ammo. Who can sell ammo as a business in Japan? No, I think everything is Japan builds their own shotgun. America complains about spending fifteen thousand or fifteen hundred dollars on an AR is a right. Yeah, I. So one thing you got to understand. One thing you got to understand, is that, like the culture, the culture in Japan is is dramatically different. You're like, how the f did he get to that? How the f did he get in firing range? Like, how did he get in firing range with this blunderbuss looking? weapon that he made with pvc and duct tape and that's because he had to make a weapon with pvc and duct tape in japan people don't have that like cultural understanding that you know holy someone's gonna get clapped the only people that have guns uh in in like the civilian population are usually yakuza people and they also don't really operate like normal organized crime operates but especially now but they're like literally organized and collaborate with uh, local authorities collaborate with the police it's basically like a business that is that takes violent means into their own hands and in certain instances could even operate like the police force so aside from like uh you know off the yakuza like the likelihood that you're gonna get uh murked by a gun well not super high and as a matter of fact a lot of the political assassinations that have happened a lot of the political assassinations that happened in Japan, with the exception of the one that I just showed you, where the fascist in the 60s um, executed uh, uh, the, the socialist guy on live television with a katana, most of those other political executions, which are commonplace in Japan, have happened at the hands of the Yakuza. One of the main branches of the Yakuza form from Doc Union workers. My Japanese friends and family are shocked that he was shot, then sad that he died. Abe was very unpopular leading up to his resignation. Um, nine deaths caused by a firearm in 2019 compared to 30, 39,470 in the U.S. the same year. Yeah. And Japan does have a suicide culture. If you want to talk about suicides, I mean, I believe we have a higher rate of suicide, which is wild. If I'm not mistaken, I don't want to f*** that up. But it is kind of crazy. Like, you know, you know Japan is like, you know, having, uh, having a, a, a culture revolving around suicide. People working themselves like crazy. Dude, come on. Bro, that's f***.
I mean, he did shoot him with a fallout gun, to be fair. He did turn on vats and shoot him with a fallout gun. But unlike fallout, you want to know why it's not fallout? Because it took two shots. Fallout is, is, is you know, enemies in fallout literally are famously f uh, bullet sponges. You know what I mean? And, and Abe, on the other hand, not a bullet sponge. Two, two pop, two shots, and it is all it took. Not just an improvised gun, but also improvised ammo. Electronically detonated powder, battery below the barrels. Second Amendment weeps chirping about gun laws in Japan. Um, yeah. Not always. Sometimes limbs will fall off. Okay, anyway. Japan has a lot of similarities with America, though. And then we're going to get back to that now. Abe also visited the Yasukuni Shrine on multiple occasions despite opposition from China and Korea. The Yasukuni Shrine enshrines Japan's war criminals, for the record. Okay. Um, another, like, uh, you know, very American component. Abe refused acknowledgement of Japan's World War II sexual slavery, known euphemistically as the Comfort Women System. Abe disavowed and considered repealing the 1993 Kono Statement, which acknowledged and apologized to comfort women, which was sex slavery that they engaged in. Uh, really horrific. In 2015, Abe and Park Yun hee settled an agreement to help former comfort women, yet no victims were consulted and the agreement did not reflect their demands. Abe later reaffirmed his stance that comfort women's system was not a war crime. Um, in 2018 of October, South Korea's Supreme Court issued the opinion that Japanese corporations that use slave labor from Korea during World War II must pay $89,000 in reparations to surviving slave laborers. In response, Abe declared a trade war. Not dissimilar to America with respect to that as well. Okay. Under Abe, the government revoked subsidies for Joseon schools in, in Zainichi, Koreans in Japan, taking a hard line against Koreans in Japan. Zainichi Koreans experienced systemic discrimination and hardship. Abe also targeted Okinawa, suffering doubly under Japanese colonialism and U.S. imperialism. In 2019, Abe agreed to relocate a U.S. military base in Okinawa, despite 70% of its people voting against it in a referendum. The Okinawa referendum rejects new U.S. military base, but Abe... Um, Uh, 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 what do you call it? Abe f uh, rejected the, the uh, new U.S. military... Uh, sorry, Okinawa rejected the new U.S. military base, but Abe uh, pushed for it regardless. And for those of you who don't know, um, the Okinawa, the Okinawa uh, U.S. military base, the Marine base, right, if I'm not mistaken, is a hotbed for <laughs> not only uh, COVID... <laughs> during the time of COVID, but also famously is a place where a lot of uh, sexual assault uh, happens and is covered up, drunk driving, you know, American. Uh, so, yeah. Liberals will pro-clutch about a little fascist getting killed, but will the will be the first in line to talk about any communist or outspoken leftist over the pettiest and benign shit never fails. Yeah, of course, because they're liberals, and he's a liberal. This guy is not like a out and about fascist without, even though he is, uh, as as. Is denying Japanese war crimes specific to Abe or his party, or is it something that most Japanese politicians do? No, most of them do it. Dude, stop. Stop, dude. Okay, you're gonna get me. You're gonna get me in trouble. Stop. I don't have a position on this. I I'm just simply giving you the facts. Okay. I'm not. I don't have a position on this, other than like the obviously horrific war crimes of Japan that have gone unaddressed and its ongoing relationship with America and what that does. Uh, I I don't. I'm not saying like it's good that he got killed or whatever. Okay.
But there's a reason why liberals are like, oh my god, I can't believe he f died. Because, like, they like him. They like him because he was an ally to the United States, okay? Um, I'm hearing that on his deathbed, Shinzo Abe received the light of Islam and unhesitant unhesitatingly recited the Shahada. Even now, he looks down on the Ummah from the gardens of Jannah. Uh, truly, there is no God but God, and uh, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. Yeah, that's real. That's actually what happened. People, Baba's in the chat. Harry Truman also wanted to nuke Japan to justify so much taxpayer money going into the Manhattan Project. Yeah, good thing. Yeah, right? Yes, I did mention that his grandfather was Nobusuke Kishi, a Japanese war criminal and fascist who was released by the Allies after World War II and was elected Prime Minister after the war. I did, really, I did reveal that in the beginning. And I, while I was talking about how he is uh, consistently whitewashed uh, Japanese war crimes... Um, where is it? Where is it? Where's the thread? I missed the thread. What the? F oh, here it is. All right. So Shinzo Abe upheld U.S. imperialism in Asia, taking a hard line against North Korea and China. He actively contributed to continuing the legacy of Japanese colonialism by erasing of Japanese uh, Japanese war crimes against enslaved Koreans, and uh, ultimately, basically, he not a good guy. Okay, not a great guy. I think we all agree, right? I mean, you know, it's it's kind of not good to whitewash war crimes, especially if you were on the losing side. Like here at the at the Hasanabi broadcast, like I try to not whitewash even the winning side's war crimes. So definitely not good if you whitewash uh, the the uh, losing side's war crimes. Here he is falling into a golf bunker after Shinzo and Donald Trump, Trump senpai, played uh, golf in Japan. Anyway. Apparently, in Japan, after the 1923 Kanto earthquake, Japanese police spread rumors that Koreans were poisoning the wells. A lynch mob killed 6,000 Koreans and Japanese socialists in the aftermath. Japan's reactionary still target Koreans in Japan to this day. Um, according to uh, Keishi Kumashiro, PhD candidate, uh, there are already rumors that, are, that, sus that the suspect was a Zainichi Korean or couldn't have been Japanese uh, floating around in Japan.